and from. Hello, hello, all of you. I am so glad to be on. So sorry, I am running late this morning. I was trying to get both of my platforms up with you all, and it was giving me some connection problems, but I am very glad to be on with this teaching. Um, for those of you that are on my Instagram, hello. For those of you that are live with me on Facebook, it is good to see you, good to see you. Uh, I am live today with the teaching. I did not have time to necessarily put the title up, uh, concerning my IG account, but we're going to rock and roll and we're just going to keep on and keep on and keep on going here. Okay. So you guys know the drill. Go ahead, like, and share the broadcast. Go ahead and tag and share. I am excited to get in with this teaching. The Lord really begun to minister with me and share with me the importance of understanding the condition of the heart, um, when birthing, uh, and when birthing something new. And we all know that we are in that process of something new coming forth. We know that God is doing a new thing. We know that some new things are coming in. Uh, and we need to make sure that our condition of our heart is intact and is in proper position and alignment and healthy to begin to carry that thing forth. And God really begun to minister to me really, really uh, intensely um, with the Hebraic and um, Greek uh, background story. Sorry, guys, I'm still trying to get connection things together. So we're going to chat for a moment while we're still letting things um, get together. If you guys want to pray for the broadcast, please go ahead and pray for the broadcast. Um, but the Lord really began to really minister to me um, in, in Strong's Concordance and some incredible uh, ways concerning the degree of the heart, the posture of the heart, and the, the root of rejection, and how that can really postpone and delay birthing from coming forth, the birthing of dreams, um, and the new thing from coming in and coming forth. So um, we, we, we have all experienced rejection. We have all come into a place of rejection. We all have encountered that in some aspects, in some form, way, or another. Um, and it is crucial that we clean these things up so that what God wants to bring forth, what God desires to bring in, can truly be born in full term uh, and not necessarily uh, from a counterfeit or not necessarily from a dysfunctioned way, but that it can go forth healthy and that it can go forth in the way that God truly designed. Um, because how he created you and your created being is how the creation of your vision is going to come forward. Uh, and it is important and imperative that we all understand um, who we are created to be. It is not separate. It is not discontent uh, from what you bring forth. So who you are created to be is actually um, very, very important to what you bring forth. It, it all goes together. You cannot birth something without the heart being connected, without the heart being involved. It, it just won't happen. You, people try to birth things all day, every day, all day long um, without... Uh, the true um, connection. You have to be connected to you. You have to be connected to who God created you to be in order to bring something full term, in order to bring something to pass, in order to fully be connected to a vision. You have to be fully aligned with who God intentionally and intricately made you to be. It is not separate. You cannot do it from the outer man. You cannot do it from the outer way. You cannot do it from... Let me try to change this. Uh... Here we go. Okay. You cannot try to, to, to bring anything else together or, or in without you. You are important. Okay. So let's go ahead and pray. I want to thank you all for tuning in first and foremost. I see all of your lovely faces. So like I said, go ahead and like and share the broadcast. Like I said, I am on Instagram platform and I am on my uh, Facebook media. So I will be kind of looking back and forth with you all today um, and sharing with, with, with both of you. Um, Let's go ahead and pray. Father, I thank you for the anointing that goes forth. I thank you for the power of agreement. I thank you for the power of the anointing of the gospel uh, and that the anointing of the word will go forth. I thank you for open eyes and open ears, that the power of the glory of God would come forth, that the anointing of the teacher anointing, that the anointing right now of the prophetic and revelatory anointing will begin to go forth like never before. We thank you for the open heaven. We thank you for the tangible angels that are ascending and descending to make sure that there are open ears and open eyes eyes today that we would not just be hearers of the word but that we would be doers of the word so i thank you for opening hearts i thank you for opening minds i thank you for creating hunger to be established i thank you for igniting the fire i thank you for bringing an impartation of the divine will of god that that, that there would be healing that goes forth that there would be deliverance that goes forth that there would be the power of the lord that goes forth that would begin to ignite people to 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 uh be thrusted into wholeness this morning and that would 
would have an awakening and a revelation of what it means to be delivered from rejection so that the birthing of their dream and the birthing of their vision can go forth full term without delay as we know that the condition of the heart is whole and that a sozo and a shalom will begin to go forth and that there will be a divine unity between spirit and God within each person under the sound of my voice. And that there would be a tangible peace that would go in and that those that are here, that are ready, that are hungry would be fully attentive and fully submitted to the spirit and the power and the presence of the Lord. And that there will be no flesh involved. We cast all other things on the altar. We cast all other self-involvement at the altar right now. And we just declare and decree that all flesh would just be submitted to the to the, to the feet of the cross and the cross of Jesus, the feet of the throne and the feet of the cross of the Lord right now today. So we just yield ourselves, begin to just yield, begin to yield, begin to submit to the Father, begin to just say, Lord, here I am, begin to just surrender today, begin to just throw your hands up right now and allow the Lord to just work in you, allow God to begin to move upon you. We're just setting the atmosphere for God to move. I'm not going to jump into this teaching until I know that the atmosphere of the Lord is here and that hearts are primed and ready and under a marinated state because you need to marinate in what God is bringing forth because I don't just want to teach to bring noise or to bring a word, but I want, I want that the, I want the Lord to begin to go forth and, and do what he needs to do. Amen. Amen. So, um, like I said, guys, uh, I am going to be looking back and forth at the different uh, platforms today. Um, but I want to get into the root of rejection. I want to get into how that is important to be free from and birthing in the new thing. If you guys all followed me, you knew that I, I, I posted a post and that post said, you know, um, some allowed the, the rejection to cause you to reject and deny your own heart. I made that post and over 400 people liked that post and resonated with that post. And it's true. What has went on for so for so long is is many have allowed rejection to cause them to reject and deny themselves attributes and parts of the heart. Rejection comes in to cause you to reject those areas of you. This is an issue when trying to birth destiny or carry forth a vision. You carry the substance and the power to carry the vision and the destiny in your spirit, womb and belly. However, the heart is a totally different notion. The heart is a totally different notion. So you will carry the substance of the promise. You will carry the substance of the prophecy. You will carry the substance of the destiny in your belly. That is where you carry it. You will, you will, carry, you will carry the vision in your womb. But you will carry the connection in your heart. You will carry the substance of the vision in your womb. But you will carry the connection to it in your heart. It is the love connection that believes in the vision. That believes in the destiny with your whole heart. It is the place, the position, and the pillar. It is the pillar. Your heart is the pillar that holds all things together when carrying forth a vision, when birthing destiny. Your heart, your heart is the pillar. It is the connection. It is the place in which believes. It is the place in the posture that believes in it. It is the portion that believes, that connects, that, that, that is the connecting source, that is the connecting line. It is the connecting line. It is where you connect to the wire. Your heart is the wire to your womb. Why do you think a baby's umbilical cord is connected to the mother? The baby has to be connected to the mother's source. The baby has to be connected. It, it, it is the cord. Your heart is the cord to what you're carrying in your belly. I'm going to say that again. Your heart is the umbilical cord, your connector to what you're carrying in your belly. Your very heart is your umbilical cord to what you're birthing. Just like when, when a mother carries a baby in the womb, when a mother carries a baby in the womb, she has to be connected to the umbilical cord. She has to be connected to the umbilical cord. Otherwise that baby will not survive. 
The baby has to be connected to the oxygen, to the heart of the mother, to the connection of the mother. Otherwise, that baby will not survive. You have to be connected to your heart. Otherwise, the baby in you will not survive. You have to be connected to the breath. You have to be connected to the love, to the faith, to the, to the substance of it. Your heart has to, has to connect. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So understand the importance of the two. So your womb carries. I'm teaching today. We are going to teach today. We're going to set some people free today. Amen. Amen. So you have to understand the importance of where your heart is when you're carrying something forth. And when, <laughs> there are mothers that carry a baby without legitimacy. They, they will carry a baby with illegitimacy. You can't carry a child legitimately without connection. What you're carrying will be rejected by you. We have a lot of believers pushing their next strategy, pushing their next vision, pushing their next destiny with absolutely no heart and wonder why things are not clear and things are not adding up. There will be a state of confusion when you are not connected to you. There will be a state of confusion when you are not connected to the thing that you are birthing. There will be a state of uncertainty where you will be tossed to and fro when your heart is not connected to what is trying to come forth from within you, from the realm of the spirit. So your baby might be ready to be born. Your destiny might be ready to come forth and birth forth. But if your heart is not connected, you will try to birth in your own power, in your own strength, and you will wrestle and you will toil because nothing can be born of the flesh. It must be born of the spirit. And the spirit gives life. The spirit is everlasting life. The spirit is resurrection life. It is connection. The spirit is connection to the Godhead. But if your heart is not connected, you will not bring forth. You will not birth forth. You will not birth forth something without your heart intact. You cannot force something to come forth and birth without the totality of receiving it fully yourself. My God. You cannot force something to come forth and be born without the totality of you receiving it fully yourself. If you do not receive you, you cannot birth. If you do not receive you, you cannot birth the congratulations, the coming arrival, because you are illeg illegitimately birthing something. It's just like a mother trying to birth something that has no connection with her baby, that does not want her baby, that is rejecting her, her, her baby from within her. A natural born mother will discard what she is birthing. It is a spiritual abortion. But a natural birthing. By God's sovereignty and grace, it will be born. But unless you receive and unless you connect with what is being born, it will not fully flourish. It will not fully come to pass. It will not fully live and thrive because you have no, you have no attention to it. You have no connection to your baby that is coming forth. You have no connection to what is being born. Birth means to come forth. Birth in the Greek, and I'm going to get into that, means to come forth. It means to carry forth. It means to bring something that has been inside forward. You cannot Ill illegitimately birth something. It is the same as in the natural. It is the same as in the natural. You cannot reject your womb. Now we got a lot of problems right here. We got a lot of problems right here. When time and time again, 
our intricate and intimate places of who we are and who we were created to be have been rejected. Whether by a church, whether by intimate relationships. We got a serious issue on our hands. When the enemy has sent a seed of rejection through a generational line from one person to another person to another person and you have tried to bring forth yourself, you have tried to bring forth your expression, you have tried to bring forth who you are, you have tried to carry on who you are, share who you are, birth who you are, bring to pass who you are and, 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 and whether it be by someone that just didn't agree, whether it be by someone that just didn't, it didn't add up to them, but whatever the case, whatever the issue, someone has come to reject that, then another person behind them came to reject that, then another person in line came to reject that, then another person down the line came to reject that, and then what you have is a series of a line of rejection coming to reject what the seed was in your womb. So then what do you begin to do? By natural survival rate, we begin to shun those parts away. We begin to push those parts aside. We begin to tuck those areas and those intricate parts of who we are down deep. And we begin to say, oh, these places must have no value. These places must not be worthy. These places must not hold any value. These places must not hold any leverage that it, it's not being received, it, it is not being welcomed, it is not being being nourished, it is not being seen, it, it is not being welcomed. When those places and parts of who we are in our womb and in our belly, please share this broadcast. We all know that Facebook and, 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 and the media line has done some things with our brothers and our sisters live streams and this is something that needs to go forth through the whole body of Christ because we need to get free. Because this is the new thing and the only way nations and regions and cities are going to get saved and delivered is if, is if we have these new things come forth. As if new ideas and new innovations are born. And we cannot allow the devil to have a foothold in the root of rejection any longer. This thing has got to die. This thing has got to be broken. And it has got to go. It has got to go. And I am here. I am here. To, to, to bring forth the word of the Lord so that we can all get free and that we can all rip the mask off this thing and have it exposed for what it is. I want all 54 people to share this live stream because we have got, we have got to get people to see with clear eyes and a clean conscience what this is. Because we cannot wait in the ditch any longer. We cannot allow these, these, these things in our womb that God designed to come to pass to be in the trenches anymore. We have got to let it come forth. But back to what I was saying. What begins to happen is after these li this line in this series of rejection. We begin to push these things aside and say this must not be worthy. This thing must not be worthy. This thing in me must not be worthy enough to bring forth. And then a seed of discouragement begins to sow seed. And then you, become, you, you, you get in this line of discouragement. And then you begin to second guess who you are. You begin to second guess that thing that was put inside you. You begin to second guess that very, very, very thing. And what you were created and designed to do. What you were created and designed and, and put on this earth to do. You begin to second guess it. Because no one, time and time again, no one has seen it worthy. And it has made it difficult it has made it difficult to, to, to flourish if there has been no one to support it. If, if there has, if, 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 it's, it's almost like a baby being born and it being left on the hospital table and there is no one to tend to it. If that baby doesn't get fed, if that baby doesn't get tended to, if that baby doesn't get washed, if that baby doesn't get the, the, the squeezy snot out of its nose, if that baby doesn't get changed, if that baby doesn't get bathed, th there is a neglect. And that very seed of that promise on the inside of you experiences neglection. That's the first thing that rejection does to a baby is the baby feels neglected, abandoned in natural born life. So that very promise on the inside of you begins to experience neglect. And then you, because of that ha habitual pattern that historic pattern, you begin to neglect. 
You begin to say, well, I just don't know what to do with this anymore. I just don't know how to carry this on. I just don't know how to succeed. And then you just put it on a shelf and it begins to collect dust. And then it begins to have a lesser focus. And what God initially called you to do with that fervent vision, what God initially called you to do with that fervent vision that was on fire, you had the fire for the assignment. You had the fire for it, but now you've carried it for years and 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 years. And years. Now it's been 13 years down the line and there has been a seed of rejection with that birth in promise. But yet you've been, you've been, it's been neglected. It has not been cherished. It has not been seen. It's not been welcomed. So then what begins to happen? So then what begins to happen is a series, and then you just begin to think, oh, all this time has gone forth. How in the world can I carry it forth now? All this time has happened. All this time has went forth. All this time has went forward. And now I don't even, I don't even have the fire for it. I don't have the fervency to carry it on. There's less fuel. There's less focus. There's less passion. And then what begins to happen is over a time and a, and a season, if as if you can be, if you begin to wait long enough, emptiness begins to transpire, and your vision and your destiny, destiny begins to feel empty. Your destiny and your purpose that begins to have an emptiness in your heart, and what was once a fruitful vine becomes a place of desolate ruin because of a series of rejection. My God. But God says no more. God says no more. God says no more today. God says no more. God says no more. You're going to get healed. You're going to get healed. You're going to get healed. And you're getting healed right now. Because what's going to happen is you are going to get set free. You're going to get set free today because there's going to be a revelation that transpires on the inside of you that is going to cause strength to arise, that is going to begin to cause that which is what was meant to come forward to have a new line of perspective because the enemy is being masked. The darkness is being exposed. A.Z. Tozer said, this is his quote, the neglected heart will soon be a heart overrun with worldly thoughts. The neglected life will soon become moral chaos. My God. Listen to that quote by A.W. Tozer. The neglected heart will soon be a heart overrun with worldly thoughts. The neglected life will soon become moral chaos. Neglect of who you are in Christ in connection produces toil. Neglect of, I'm teaching today, my God, I feel the fire of the Lord. I feel the fire of the Lord. I feel the spirit of revival in this place. I feel the spirit of revival in this place. Listen to me, people of God. Listen to me, prodigals. Listen to me, those that are not believers that are watching this replay. Listen to me. The neglect of who you are in connection will produce toil and chaos, overrun thoughts by disconnection. You will run into a 14 life of carnality versus spirit because where the spirit is, there is freedom. And where the spirit is, there is life. And where there is life, there is abundance. What is birth? Birth is life being born. Your destiny has to be born with life. Otherwise, you will birth something dead. Because God is not a God that he shall lie. And he will carry forth and he will bring to pass at his right timing. He has an appointed time. But your heart, your heart can, cannot uh, uh, weigh in the balances of delay. Your heart cannot weigh in the balances of delay. And when something is born in delay... It will not fully experience life. It will not fully experience its life-giving power. It will not fully experience the flourishing birth of it fully coming forth. Of it fully coming forth. Just because someone failed to neglect. Just because a series of events came upon your life to neglect. Your intricate being, your intricate frame, that which was on the inside of you to come to pass. Who you are created to be in full totality. Do not, do not 
Do not take that bait. Do not take that report. Do not sign that contract with your previous rejectors and sign the contract of agreement and say, well, I guess this is it. I'm going to sign the death sentence to my created being because it must not be worthy. It must not be valued. It must not seek the value in which it needs to be born my God whether a mother or a father values a baby in natural life that baby still must be born listen to that thank you Holy Spirit whether or not a natural mother or a natural father receives that baby or not by biochemistry and anatomy that baby is gonna come out that baby is gonna come forth that baby has to come out of the mother's body. Whether you're a man or a woman on here, you carry, you carry destiny in your heart. You carry destiny to come forth. You carry destiny to come forth on the inside of you. Birthing happens in both men and women spiritually. So whether or not the series of events came upon in your life to reject that which was on the inside of you, that thing's still on the inside of you needing to be born. Whether you reject it or not, that thing on the inside of you still needs to be born. It still has to come to pass. You do yourself a favor to touch and agree with it, pull yourself up, get it together. And say, you know what? I forgive those that rejected what was on the inside of me. And I forgive myself for denying myself. And, and, and that verse that says deny yourself and pick up your cross and follow you, that's talking about deny your flesh, deny your earthly desires. But you do not desire, you do not deny who you cre are created to be. You, and, and that's what's coming forth. It's you. It is the revealing of the sons and daughters in the earth. All of creation waits for the birthing of sons and daughters to manifest in the earth. That birth is the totality and the fullness of you coming forth. Of the full destiny that God, that God himself ordained, fashioned, and designed you to fully emerge. It is you being born. It, it is you coming to pass. It is the fullness of you as prophecy in the earth coming to pass. If you deny yourself, I mean, if you deny what God's called you to be and who he's called you to be, that's an insult, ladies and gentlemen. That's a complete insult to what God did on the cross. Because you are saying you are not found worthy. You are saying you are not worthy enough to bring to pass his destiny in your life. What he breathed into your frame. What he sent his son to hang and die and humiliate himself on the cross and, and cause the cost of his life to be murdered and humiliated for is not found worthy enough for the cross. A.W. Tozer's quote, I'm going to say it again. The neglected heart will soon be a heart overrun with worldly thoughts. The neglected life will soon become moral chaos. What is that saying? If you neglect your own heart of connection, if you deny your own heart because others have, if you shun your own heart because others have, worldly thoughts will begin to materialize and you will no longer host the mind of Christ. And you will no longer see through the lens of clarity. And you will have problems and issues and struggles of seeing how to move forward. How to go forth and, and fresh instruction and new manna and fresh revelation. Because you have attached yourself to the contract of the seed of the enemy and the world. The world's carnality. The world's view. Man. Man. Man's view, the things of the flesh. And, a ne and that neglect will cause moral chaos among you. Creating toil after toil of pressing 
without connection. Have you ever done that, ladies and gentlemen? Have you ever tried to press in, but your heart felt rejected? Your heart felt downcast? You felt bowed down? You felt unreceived, unwanted? You felt neglected, but you kept trying? You kept trying to remain faithful? You kept trying to stay on the race, on the course, on the marathon, and continue with one foot in front of the other with a neglected heart, with a cast down heart, with a heart that felt unworthy, devalued, and casted out and thrown out, rejected, put into a ditch, but your faithfulness and your overcomer spirit and your warrior spirit because you're the remnant caused you to press on caused you to intercede caused you to decree caused you to prophesy but no matter what you sat bowed down you kept trying to press in but you were pressing against a wall you were hitting wall after wall after wall after wall because there is no connection in you you must be connected here Otherwise, there will be chaos and you will be entertaining a worldly dimension of chaos. And what you are trying to press through, what you are trying to press in and birth will not be seen thoroughly. I'm going to explain my encounter that caused all of this to begin to unravel. I was sitting with the Lord in deep worship, deep, deep worship, and the Lord began to tell me, you know, he was sharing with me personally. I'm not, I'm not going to get into personal things because it's personal. Um, but concerning something that was going to birth in my own life. And he, he, he began to invite me into a deeper place. And he said, and now in order to birth this deeper thing, you're going to have to birth deeper from within your heart. You're going to have to go deeper in your heart. Because what you're birthing in the realm of the spirit must be born in the deep depths. and the deep that calls out unto, unto deep. The depth of your heart. There's something in the deep of your heart that needs to be seen in order to birth it in the spirit. And I was like, okay, hold on. I need scripture, God. I need scripture to line up with me on how in the world birthing has anything to do with the, with the degree of the heart. How birthing can have any degree with birthing through the heart. Because... When, you, when you're barren or when you birth, there is something in the womb. There's something in the belly. We, we understand we carry on the outer realm, the outer rim of birthing through the spirit man. But what? I need you to tell me how the womb is in the heart also. I need you to tell me how the womb is connected to the heart. Here we go. Write this down, ladies and gentlemen. Write this down. Strong's 4393. Prothero. The Greek word prothero. P-R-O-P-H-E-R-O. -E Strong's 4393. Look it up. Look it up. To birth. Means to bring forth. That's what this strong means. That's what this strong means to birth, to bring forth. Prophecy and promise means birthing. You birth the promise. You birth the promise. Quorama, it means to bring something forth. It means to bring something forth. Get out your Bibles. I'm going to go to a scripture. I'm going to go to a scripture and then I'm going to rabbit trail. Luke 6, 45. The good man out of the good treasures of his heart brings forth what is good. And the evil man out of evil treasures brings forth what is evil. For from the mouth speaks from what is filled in the heart. So you will birth good treasure or evil treasure. You will bring forth good treasure or evil treasure from the heart. But the treasure of your heart has everything to do with birthing. The treasure of your heart, I'm teaching today, hallelujah, has everything to do with the bringing forth, prophero, like prophecy. To bring forth, to bring to pass what is good. You carry it 
forth. So the carrying forth has to both do with the heart and the womb. Has to do has to do with both the heart and the things of the spirit. You bring forth your treasure as a believer in light and joy. Or you can bring forth that which is decaying and not of life. Bring forth. Wickedness is after the treasure. Your treasure fuels God-sized visions, God-sized acceleration, passion, fervency, and destiny babies. Wickedness is after the treasure of your heart because it will come to sift out and steal and try to devour what is on the inside of your heart, the treasure of your heart. Why? Because you have to birth the treasure from your heart, what God put in your heart of hearts what your love is. You're connected to your destiny. You have a passion and a love and a tender care for what you bring forth, what you birth forth, for the vision. Naturally, you love what is being born. Just like a mother is supposed to love a child, just like a father is supposed to love a child, God will create a, a love for it, a, a, an affection for what you bring to pass. But wickedness will come to try to defile the treasure in the heart, we just read it in Luke 6, 45. The good man out of good treasure brings forth, which means birth, what is good or what is evil. <laughs> Unhealed and misled, the heart can be deceitful above all things. Yes, that verse is only hosting territory when you are in the flesh and unhealed. So I don't want to hear, well, what about that scripture that says a heart can be deceitful above all things? Yes, it can be deceitful above all things. When you are unhealed and misled, absolutely, you will be deceived. But that leads me to Psalms 119.9. But how can a man keep his way pure? By living according to the word of God. So your heart is pure and the ways of God as you follow the ways of God. Amen. I'm going to come back to that page in just a second. But I want to ask you a serious question. If there is anyone on this live stream that has ever once dreamed radical, dreamed wild, dreamed big, dreamed and soared with your dreams. I'm talking, you had crazy dreams, crazy faith, and you were crazy enough to walk towards them. But now they seem far and in between, and the memory is, is a distant one. The memory is a distant one, it's an ache. Well, I got good news for you today. Above all else, guard your heart and that which flows from it. Above all else, guard your heart and that which flows from it. I want to open up this moment real quick before I move on for a time of just for you to repent. I want to open up this moment right now for you to have a time to repent for the, for the root of rejection before I go further. And leaving your, your, your vision and your destiny at the wayside and putting it in the, the trenches and putting it in the, di in the ditches. So I want to open up this moment right now to you to pray with me. We're going to go through a prayer right now and we're, we're going to uproot and shut the door on this. Are you guys ready? Repeat after me. In the name of Jesus, I humbly and solely come before the throne of God. I rend my heart and not my garments. I rend my heart before you, Abba. I put my heart on the floorboard of the altar of your throne. And I repent. 
I ask for your forgiveness. I wholly and tenderly inquire of you mercy and grace. My heart is exposed before you right now. I hide nothing. I bring it all to the front. In full honesty. And confess and admit that I have neglected who you have created me to be. I confess and acknowledge before you that I have allowed man's voice to have dominion in me over the voice of my creator. I confess and bring before you and admit that I have allowed it to stop me in ways Delay my joy, life, hope fulfilled, my acceleration, my momentum, my new connections, and even my upgrade. But I call upon your marvelous name as I look at you on the throne, Abba. Your word says, create in me a clean heart. For your word says that you have taken out the heart of stone and have given me a heart of flesh. I lay all my rejected history down at the altar. We're just going to block naysayers right now. Got no time for devils on this live stream. Hallelujah. <laughs> but I lay my heart, Father, on your altar. And I lay down the history of rejection. I repent for my self-denial. And I ask for your grace to help me strengthen me and increase me on this new path, on this new path set before me concerning what I'm carrying, concerning the vision. Concerning my promise, concerning my destiny. And I lift up my hands and surrender and I say, I receive your new journey. I receive your new set of instruction. And I receive a fresh wind to blow through the sails of my heart, to thrust me upon new uncharted waters, a new set forth voyage, hallelujah, and not the waters of the past. 
knowing that you receive called and chose me to follow through in the earth. My God, I feel the weight of glory. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, by the sound of my voice, say this, by the sound of my voice, I seal this prayer in the heavens by the blood of the Lamb and by the testi testifying of my faith. And I declare that it is done. It is finished according to the word. The word himself. Amen. Let's touch base with some scriptures quickly and then I'll get into some Q and A's and have some personal ministry because I just feel like the territory is just on that for some prophecy and prayer later. I love you guys so much. Are you enjoying this broadcast? Are you enjoying the life that is on this broadcast? There is such a life. There is such a spirit of life. The life giver is here. I feel such a vibrancy of the life giver, the life giver the everlasting of everlasting the everlasting god is on this live stream glory to god and i just feel that every voice of death every decay every word curse is breaking off of you today it is breaking off of you that word curse that violence that violence i, I hear god saying that violent tongue that has risen against you in judgment is being broken today it is being broken today. It is being broken today. That violent tongue that has come as a weapon. That violent tongue. That violent tongue that has risen up against you. That has tried to cast down your destiny. It has tried to cast down you. You, the connection of you, 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 your created being, your intricate frame, as Psalms 139 says, when he breathed into you, he formed and fashioned your in, in, innermost being, your innermost parts, your innermost parts. He has come. He has come to bring life to your innermost parts. So that you can be born as the manifestation of sons and daughters in the earth. So that you can be born in the land. And heal creation because all of creation waits for you. All of creation waits for you. Can you imagine if all of the sons and daughters of God were born in throughout creation? All the deficits and defilement of the land would be broken. Every curse would be silenced and hindered because the manifestation army of sons and daughters has truly went forth in cadence. My God. He needs you to live. He needs you to be alive. He needs what is on the inside of you to come to pass and be born. You need it. You need it. And he knows you need it. You need to be alive. You need to have life and life more abundantly. And it is for you. That baby is still waiting for you inside of you, inside of your womb to come out, to come to pass, to come forth, to break forth. May these words of my mouth and this meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, O Lord. I heard him share that verse with me, preparing this teaching. Psalms 1914. May these words of my mouth and this meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight. We long to please the Father as children. Just like your son and your daughter and your children long, they long for your acceptance. They long to please you. And when they get in trouble and they recognize that, 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 that you are not pleased with them, they get their feelings hurt. They, 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 they feel downcast. Well, just like those series, follow me, hear me on this, this is crucial. Just like that series and that history of rejection. Wow, I feel witchcraft breaking off. Witchcraft off the mind. All of a sudden I had a pain in my right my right side of my, my forehead. Witchcraft, wrong thinking, wrong thinking and confusions breaking off right now. Wrong thinking. But just like the series of rejection, that line of that history came. It made you believe the lie that what you were carrying and who you are is not pleasing. 
Hello. It made you believe the unction that who you are must not be pleasing because it encountered rejection. Who you are and what you are created for must not be pleasing if others saw, oh, that's strange. Oh, that's, oh, no, later, later, later you can do this. Later when you're 60, you can have your destiny. Later when you're 70, you can be a leader in this congregation. Later, later, when you've cleaned the toilets for five years and then you've taken my four-year course, you can be the intercessor first and then you can prophesy in my church. But even though I know you're a prophet, I'm going to make you do all of these other things and all of these other offices first before you can prophesy. And I'm going to neglect the prophet in you. Or even, even intimate people, intimate lovers, families, relationships. That is just said, just no. Just giving you a no, a no, a no when God has given you a solemn yes. He said, oh, guess it's just not my time. Guess it's just not my time. Guess it's just not my time. Guess this is just not pleasing now. Guess this is just not available now. Guess this is just not important now. And the importance, the value, the value of who you are put a presumption and a, a degree on you that has discipled your greatness. We long to please the Father. That's why we worship. We worship to please the Lord. We serve to please the Lord because we love Him. Love pleases. Love pleases. Song of Solomon. What does Song of Solomon say? Do not awaken love until it pleases. My God. Pleasure is love. Pleasure and love go hand in hand. You cannot delight your heart. You cannot have pleasure and delight unless love is prevalent. If others have failed to love those intricate parts of you and have neglected and rejected and denied and downcasted those areas, you yourself will feel like you do not give pleasure. That those parts in you must not be pleasing. And the meditation of the things of your heart become discipled. When we deny our creation, it grieves the Lord. Like I said, don't allow the ignorance of man's discard to cause you to throw you away. Don't allow the ignorance, because that's flat out what it is. Foolishness, ignorance, and devil, devil worship. It's the doctrine of devils that made you feel that way. Not the gospel, not the good news. It was man's religion, man's deficit, man's decay. So, to briefly recap, you cannot birth, you cannot birth anything unless your heart is free to know that you please the Lord. Who you are, you need to know this, who you are is pleasing. You please the Father. You hold more honor and value to the Lord than any other substance on this universe or dimension. You are pleasing, valued, valued, more precious than rubies, more precious than silver. You are his bride. And he cares for what's inside of you. He cares. He cares. 
for your heart to bring to pass who you are. Because you're called to birth who you are. You're called to bring forth your own unique expression. You're called to carry forth your own vibrancy, your own fingerprint. Stop trying to sound like everybody else. Stop trying to do it and compare yourself to everybody else. Trying to make your destiny look like everybody else because your true destiny was not flourished, was not seen, was neglected. So now some are mimicking just to stay faithful. But I speak liberty upon you now. I speak freedom upon you now. That you would be free in the name of the Lord. That you would be free to go forth in this earth with, a new, with your expression. And not hold back. No matter if people are ready for you or not. Whether people are ready for you or not. Beloved. Whether people are ready for you or not. Bring it. Bring all of it. Bring all of it. Bring all of you to the table. And stop bringing tidbits and portions to the table. Stop wearing masks to the table. Show up. Show up. You hear me? Show up to that table. Free. Not in arrogance. Not in pride. Not in any Jezebelic notion like, here I am. No. You show up with the pearls of great price wrapped around your neck. You show up. Because it costed you to show up. Costed you a price. But show up. The rejection was your price. But now you have all permission. Now you got all permission to put that behind you and show up on a new page on a new page I'm such an old school note writer I know I had another another scripture here like I said you are called to bear the image and the likeness of Christ. You are called to walk out what he said. You are called to walk out what he decreed. Otherwise, what, what are you putting prayer in? What are you putting your faith in? What are you serving God for? If you don't even believe in your own heart. Who you are. It's not a lukewarm gospel. It's time to put these things behind us. It's time to put these roots behind us. It's time to move on. And it is time to succeed in the promise. It is time to reach the prize set before us. And running our marathon. And running our race. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. So I just want to release a blessing on you. I want to just speak the blessing of God as um, just as a sister in faith and as, you know, uh, the apostolic grace on my life that there would be breakthrough. I want to bless you with victory and bless you with breakthrough today, today, not tomorrow. <laughs> this moment breakthrough is upon you. This moment right now, the breaker, the breaker of God is upon your life to break through the regions and the areas and the chambers of your heart to catapult, to catapult you into your new thing, into your new endeavor, your next strategy to be born, your next instructions to be born, your new, new, new. I bless you with that blessing in the name of Jesus. 
in the name of Jesus. Well, I love that teaching. That was a meaty, 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 meaty word. I love that word. If you guys have any questions and answers, I am here. I'm going to let you post your questions and answers now while I minister to a few of you um, before we sign off. I just feel the Lord's grace to uh, pray and prophesy. Um, but if you have any questions, go ahead and ask them. Uh, if there's anything that you need clarity on or clarification on that no one's been able to answer for you, I will try my best to answer that. And I will try my best to answer um, with the knowledge and the wisdom that I've learned on my journey. Because um, like I said, I do not teach anything that I did not walk through. I do not teach anything that God did not train me in. Amen. So all of this is built by raw experience um, and revelation as he has carried me through each and every one, each and everything. Um, so glory to God. I'm just so thankful. I'm so thankful that there um, has been trial because what we bring to pass is the wisdom to carry others uh, and, you know, throughout life. Um, so yeah, so yeah, so don't despise, don't despise where you've been. Amen. Don't despise, uh, what you've walked through, uh, because you developed wisdom to where you're headed and you will be able to lead others in what you were tried through and what you walked through. Uh, amen. How can someone go forward when they're sexually abused? And the heart is broken. Well, honestly, I wish I could say that that is a quick process, but I know that it isn't. Uh, but what I can say is diligence needs to be your companion. And how do you remain diligent in a moment of weakness? Well, it's a decision. Um, it's just like we decide to choose to walk with the Lord, whether we feel it or not. It's just like we choose to press on and have faith when there are moments that we don't necessarily feel faithful, when we don't necessarily feel like we can, when we don't feel like we have it together. It's the same principle when we walk through trauma. Um, and I can vouch for um, a season of trauma. I've walked through a mo many moments of trauma um, in my earlier years of, of being a believer. Um, but what you do is you make the diligent decision to uh, do what you have to do. And you just make you make that that vow to yourself and to the Lord uh, that you are going to be self-disciplined to seek Him in the secret place. And there are um, other attributes as far as uh, Christian counseling that I would advise. Just so you're not doing it alone, and you have that support. Um, I wish I could say that every church uh, is great and that kind of support, but unfortunately, that's not so. Uh, so, so I would just suggest that you you get psychological support. Because uh, we need to walk through these things in our minds. You know, we, we need someone that can help us walk through the pathways of our thoughts. Uh, we need doctors sometimes to help us sift through the patterns, the thought patterns, the, the, the neurons and the, the electrons and our wiring. Um, so uh, let's keep the questions also pertained to uh, the teaching and not just random questions. I, I won't be answering random questions. Questions pertaining to this teaching, I'll answer so, um, so yeah, so when, when the area of the heart experiences trauma like that, you will need, you will need to, to take that diligent step and make those choices to, um, seek the Lord in the secret, secret place, fast, pray, uh, gather resources of others that have walked through what you've walked through and overcame books like that nature, uh, that way that they're sources of encouragement and you have hope to know that if they can do it, you can do it. And then, then of course, seek, seek help. Um, with uh, doctors and such. Glory, glory. God bless you guys. You guys are amazing. You guys are amazing. Hallelujah. Uh, I, I also uh, cannot read very long questions. Please keep the questions at least three sentences. And just to state the question, I don't need the explanation. Oh, amen, Lauren. Yeah, I can't read all, all of those long, long uh, things there. Okay. Yeah, like I said, guys, I'm only going to answer things pertaining to, to this. Oh, God, God bless you guys on Instagram. It's so good to see you. Amen. 
Amen, Brenda. Amen. Okay, I don't really see too many uh, valid questions here. Is it wrong if you have a person who's been teaching you, if you sense the Lord leading you to do something else? How do you respond? Okay, yeah, that's not on this. Nicole, I want to minister to you for a second. Um, because it says in the word that when you were in your mother's womb, the Lord sought you and knew you. That he formed your substance and knew you before and in your mother's womb. So regardless of man's deficit and sin, his purpose on your life is what stands. I break the curse, I break the lie of the curse that you've been cursed in the womb. I break that lie right now because God breathed you into your mother's womb and you had the blessing and the promise and the life of God Almighty in you. Now what the enemy tried to steal does not hold leverage. You're still a daughter. You're still a daughter. So I just invite you to have a, a change and a shift in your perspective and in your mindset to know um, who God's called you to be versus the deficit that happened. Amen. God bless you, Lorraine. I just see so much gold. I see gold. All around you, Lorraine. I see sheets of gold, rains of gold, rain, raining gold, raining gold, raining gold all around you. And I feel like that has to do with the, the streets that are paved with gold and in revelations. And I feel like God's going to begin to open up some new revelation for you uh, to birth something new and with the gold, with revelation in gold, with revelation in gold. What do you do if everyone, okay, no, okay. How can I move past the frustration of processing the new thing? The process of discerning what the new thing is as well as the new territory. Well, the thing is with the new thing, you won't have to pry in its timing and in its season. There will be no toil um, when the new thing is in season for you. Uh, so I would ask the Lord, instead of jumping into the new thing and the birth of the new thing, are you birthing something in the process? Are you birthing process or are you birthing the full term baby? What, what part, what timeline of this new thing are you in? Is it the full totality of the baby? Is it the whole picture? You know, and, and that you can answer if you've been faithfully walking towards destiny and ministry and, and making the proactive steps and the clarity that you've had in point A, B, and C. And now you know that the big puzzle piece needs to be brought together. Now you will know and understand if that is being born. Uh, so what I would ask is what part of the process? Um, I just put up a, a, the blood of Jesus on my spirit right now in Jesus name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood perimeter, the, the blood the blood wall of the Most High God that is up right now. In Jesus' name, I pray. Angels of the Lord, angels of the Lord, angels of the Lord, angels of the Lord, angels of the Lord. I just felt like there were some watchers on this live stream um, <laughs> that, that were pulling and prying. Um, okay, so I would ask what process... He's, Seers can see all things in dimensions. I don't know why people do that. We can, we can, we can, we can see. Um, but that's what you need to ask yourself. You need to ask yourself, what part of the process are you birthing? Uh, and what what part are you bringing, bringing to pass? So, Because you might be birthing and bringing to pass an area of the process of preparation leading to the bigger picture.
Amen. Okay. Well, I think that's about it, guys. I think we've wrapped, we've wrapped up. Um, I loved being on with you. I absolutely, absolutely loved this teaching. It will be uploaded to my YouTube channel. Make sure that you, you guys go ahead and subscribe to that. If you have not subscribed, you guys can do that. Uh, the link is at the bottom of my profile picture. Uh, so you guys can go ahead and uh, subscribe, tap, hit the bell so that you know when new videos are uploaded and when I am live. Um, so this will be uploaded today. I'll make sure to put that on there so you guys can go back and re-listen to it at your leisure whenever you want. Um, trying to think of what other announcements are next. Oh yeah, Texas Gathering is next weekend. Um, I will be speaking in Texas, hosting the, uh, the um, Hub Gathering uh, in Lumberton. Uh, if you guys are out, you can come join me. Uh, and if you were blessed by this teaching, you guys know the drill. You can uh, partner with me, bless so, uh, at www.jessielive.com, all lowercase, the donation um the donation region of that is at the bottom of the website. So you guys can give there uh, if you were blessed by today. And if you want to sew into your, um, yes, the baby is huge. Amen. Amen. Big destinies, David. Big destinies. Um, so, yeah, uh, you guys can, you guys know where to go for all that. So blessings, blessings, blessings. And I will see you uh, live sometime next week. Okay. Bye-bye, guys.